Electric Fire 2, Hidden Chains, Chapter 1. The orc was back in place to where it was before. Now our next test, defeating the bio-lizard. I don't think I could have done the teleportation of the orc by myself. Seems Sonic can also use it as well. I joined his side in fighting the bio-lizard. I was much more powerful with my rings off. We took turns attacking the bio-lizard. We also dodged its attacks. Finally, after some time, it gave up. And well exploded, unable to handle our energy, the Ark was able to withstand the explosions. It barely got any scratches or dents. Seemed Gerald had done a good job on building it. Sonic and I exchanged glances. I could feel that my eyelids were getting heavy. I knew I wasn't going to be able to stay in the air for much longer. My rings were the reason why. They kept me from using too much of my energy. Now with them being off for as long as they were, well, all my energy is being drained. I held the rings in one hand. I could feel them both there in my right hand. I didn't have the strength to put them back on, nor did I want to. Sonic turned away from me for just a moment to look at the Ark. Astonished that we actually had done it, we put the Ark back in place and also defeated a powerful being. In that split moment he turned you away, my body found that it had no strength left to keep me up in the air of space. My body was still glowing yellow, I could feel myself plummeting, but there was nothing I could do. I was starting to feel the effects of sleep, but then suddenly, something awoke me a bit, a sudden jolt, as I felt a hand grab the rings I was holding onto. Shadow, say something. I looked up slightly to see Sonic. He still had enough strength to keep himself up in the air, probably because he didn't have to worry about laying off too much energy. Let go. My voice was almost a whisper. I was so tired, I couldn't speak up much. Let me go right now. I spoke up a bit this time. At least I tried. I had my eyes closed. I could feel the tears stream again. I knew what I was doing. I was losing a friend because of this this choice. Stop it. I'm not losing you, Shadow. I couldn't look at him. I didn't have the heart to do so. Our friendship was starting to shatter. Yes, Sonic you are. I replied coldly, though I really meant well for him. He's probably the only one to have gone to know the real me, though Tom and Maddie got to know me a bit as well. You need to stop for a moment, Sonic, and think. I mean, you have a choice. He was still trying to pull me up, probably thinking he'd take me back to the Ark. Was worth more, a tainted life that never fulfilled its purpose, a life that has no future. I took a breath of air for a moment, before actually looking up at Sonic, though my eyesight was growing dim. Or the millions of lives down there, Tom, Matty, Ozzy, Tails, Obega, Carl, and Rouge are all down there too. They all still have a chance and a future to look forward to, thanks to you and me. I didn't have much strength left at this point. I could barely move, but I managed to grab a Chaos Emerald from my quills and hand it to Sonic. It took in his free hand. Shadow, that isn't true. You have a future. I don't want to lose you. He was trying so hard, I could feel that my body was returning to normal. Gun would be my future. They wrecked my life before. It's best if you let me go. I'd rather be in charge of myself instead of being a lab experiment all over again. Or put into isolation again. You're free though. Besides, who knows, maybe we'll see each other again someday. Please, take care of him. I could tell we were nearing the Ark. I knew he really wanted to save me. But I didn't want to be saved. I looked up at him one last time before letting go of the rings. By now, my body was almost completely back to normal. Goodbye, Sonic. I spoke before plummeting downward. Shadow? He called out, but he realized he didn't have enough strength to come get me. He was starting to lose his super form. In a flash of light, he was gone. He most likely used chaos control. I was falling unconscious again. In my mind, I said something along the lines of, Maria, this is what you wanted, right? That was where my story should have ended, but no, it's still unclear on how I survived falling from space and back to the ground of Earth. 
the one place I can't call home. Everyone was against me, it seems. Even the old Grim Reaper seemed to have it out for me. It's probably why I'm still here. At first, I had no idea of where I ended up at. It didn't seem to matter. I was caught in a dream, though when I was found by someone. My energy was drained, but I still had enough to stay alive. Probably because of my second set of inhibitor rings that I kept over the tongues of my shoes. I used to think they were for decoration, but seems these work like the ones I usually wear on my wrists. Just my look, right? I couldn't exactly remember anything after I landed on Earth again. Let's go back to where it began, though. I was knocked out. I didn't feel anything when I landed to the ground hard. All my senses were dead. At the time, I couldn't hear or smell anything. I was barely alive when I was found. A man had found Shadow. He knew of the other space hedgehog after seeing him on the news. And well, he also ran into him once. Most of his time was spent on figuring out a way to bring the man he looked up to back. Sure, their relationship was more unstable. He looked up to the guy, but he had barely any respect back. However, in reality, he did care. He just didn't show it too well. A crush happened just outside of the man's home. He was at his window at the time trying to think. He sighed as the loneliness overtook him. He knew where his hero was now, but he just wasn't sure on how to get him back. He had a ring on him, one that Sonic used as a portal, but he only had one. It was possible he was able to find one during a fight. It was unclear though. But now, his attention was on whatever had just fallen near his house. The aftermath of the crash had left a small crater. Nearby homes shook a bit, including the man's. After the shaking stopped, the man put on a coat and headed out. It wasn't long before he came across the creature. He was hesitant though. He could tell the other needed help. It wouldn't be long before his neighbor stumbled upon it too. The man decided to carry the creature to his home. He was most likely lonely and wanted some company, whether it was a space hedgehog or not. The man laid him down on a couch before going out to figure out how to bury the crater-sized hole where he had found the hedgehog.